Yahweh, God and Creator, we surrender unto your holy presence. Our divine Creator, sanctifier, strengthening, bringing forth the fullness of your life-giving breath within us in each and every moment. We trust in you, praise you, and worship you. We open our hearts to you now to seek your wisdom and counsel in all things we face each day. And as we breathe, we breathe as one, drawing upon the life-giving embrace that is God's Spirit within, freed from any lack we may have known throughout this week, any physical limitation, anything of a spiritual nature that did not reflect that which is the perfect God that we know and love. We breathe deep. And before we begin tonight, I'd just like to open up and take this moment to offer thanksgiving for the gift of my mom, God's daughter, and for those many of you that you that do know, um, my mom did finally. The, she was birthed into new life last Tuesday at 8.34 a.m., and this week has been um, a number of things, aligning a memorial service and a celebration of life as my dad wanted it. Um, as you know, I lost my son, Christopher, unexpectedly two years ago, and we had done a beautiful celebration of life in that time, and my dad was so deeply moved by that that he requested a celebration of life for my mom today, and it was absolutely beautiful. It was wonderful to sit there and, and just to hear people that don't usually speak the language of birth into new life speaking the language of birth into new life. And it, it really shifts the nature of how these experiences unfold. If a person is suffrage trapped in the moment of what they name death and they lose sight that life is perpetual and ongoing before the grace of God, then they can't see something greater than the moment that was the loss of that person in their lives. So I just want to offer thanksgiving for the amazing gift that I received in God using my mom as the vessel to evidence me upon this earth and my dad, who is just a remarkable man in himself. But you think of a woman that uh, she was pregnant 17 times, had 12 children, and wanted to keep making more, just her body wouldn't sustain children within her anymore, and she lost a few in that time. But I just, I just want to offer thanksgiving to God for the gift of her presence, and I want to thank each and every one of you that did remain in prayer as this was all unfolding over this past week, for those of you that knew, and I am deeply grateful. So at that, I also want to kind of shift a little bit and return to what we've been talking about over these past weeks, about reaching into the deeper places, the truths that could not be born upon the disciples. And if you remember those were Yeshua's words, there are truths you cannot bear. And as we reach into these, I feel I need to back up once again and return to a basic premise of what is raised up within my heart, where I'm supposed to be before God, and how I've been drawn to this place within grace healing. And I have stated to people up front 
for years that I am not a theologian. I am one who surrendered into God's presence. I've been through the veil of death a few times within my life, and I've seen things in my life that, again, cannot be attached to Larry. They are so remarkable and so blessed and so beautiful, I have only one place to put them, and that is upon God. And that is where I direct people. I don't exalt grace healing. As I go in and I've done healing and liturgy services for many different faiths, whether they be Catholic, Episcopal, Evangelical Free Churches, um, Evangelical Conferences, uh, Baptist groups. It doesn't matter to me. I would rather reveal the love of God's presence because that is all I know. So to be totally honest with you, there's times where individuals start to try to pick apart what I might be sharing or teaching because it doesn't align with their specific theolo theologian or theological or doctrinal view. And I have to be honest with you that in my understanding, there are just way too many things upon this earth that I don't believe align with the nature of what my God is. And I believe that our God is far more expansive, beautiful, remarkable, limitless than most religions define God to be. I hear words spoken like God hates this or God hates divorce or God will cast mine enemy upon the stones or something like that. And I just look at that and I'm like going, that's man talking while under spiritual influence. And as in many of you may have known, through reading the Covenant in Love or sharing the different things that were offered in that book, as I've stated to you, I did not write that book. I just felt a leading within my heart that I was to sit and now I was to begin. And I just began typing. And seven days later, the typing was out in a book, 217 some odd pages of just the first seven days of flow now about 273 because I was led to go back in and take journal entries and mix and intermingle them. And one of the things that I've had to process in my life is being surrounded by many religious teachings from within the Catholic Church, many religious teachings within other faiths, many teachings from watching people that work within Taoist practices or Buddhist practices and stuff like this or Hindi views and having to look through it and realize that there is so much within the knowledge and intellect of man that I don't believe emerges from a perfect, loving, and limitless, omnipotent, omnipresent God. And to be very clear, omnipresence, meaning in all aspects of creation, God's Spirit is known throughout the beginning, the end, all areas, all things. God knows all things. God has absolute clarity, the completed form of everything moved into a state of blessing. So in my heart, I am here to share, dwell, point, and direct people toward the love of God. And one of the things that came to me was the ten great words. And the way it came out as this stream of consciousness writing came forth was a very simple statement. You will know that you've returned to my truth as the following emerge in your being, as the following emerges from within your being. One, you will find that you place no thing of creation above me and will know my breath to be the very beginning to your existence. In this awareness, you will honor that which is my image through surrender into that which is and not be governed by anything less than that which I see. I hear this as Yahweh's presence in the nature of defining things that we would discover within ourselves. 
as we find ourselves upon the path of God's presence. Two, knowing me in all that you are and that I am the very beginning to your being, you will find that you cannot place any image of creation before me or above me. You will find that you cannot surrender to or worship anything that is not of my love. As you see all things revealed that are less than that which I have offered you, you will know it to be revealed and its release from all generations to come and all those which have preceded you. This is the one that is most important to what I'm sharing tonight. When I hear people speaking, oh, I hate this. I, I, honestly, I, am, I can't even find comfort in speaking the word hate, even in the way I just spoke this in the teaching process. I, because I know that within God there is no hatred. So in that, there's, there's other things. When people talk about thine enemy, I can't even look upon people as my enemy. I've had me, people do horrendous things to me throughout my life. And as you've known from my story, there's, there's a couple times where an individual succeeded in killing me twice. Once burying me in the dirt. I cannot hate or even name that person an enemy, for they know not what they do. And for it is the spirits that govern them in that which they do. So if I am truly upon the path of God, I can't even turn around and look upon this person and even begin to write the first letter of the word enemy upon them. Because they are not an enemy. They may name themselves enemy upon me, but I choose not to receive the definition they present to me. And in that, I know that this, is, this instruction that I'm about to speak is so uncomfortable to people. But the reality is, if I honestly measure the presence of God within me and where I stand upon God's grace, how can I even turn around and say that I, as a believer in Yeshua, have the right to take up a weapon and take another person's life? And here we have become synonymous with the image of an individual walking with an M16 across their chest and they know the person's going to be spouting Bible terminology when they're going down the street. To me, that's alien. Because again, I'm feeling myself more and more and more aligned with the presence of God and less and less and less of what I used to want to defend. I've also found absolute zero fear of death because I know there is no death. Like in the blessing and the experience of my mom's birth into new life where I was present with my sisters the night before, well, day before on Monday. And then as they were talking back and forth around the bed and I was just led to sit right by my mom and then her body would convulse up and she would go into these choking states and and I would just led to just reach place my hand at the back of her neck pray rest and breathe while they kept talking and then she would come settle back down and rest and it was just a matter of that I chose not to agree with the suffrage that she was presenting I chose to agree with God's presence in this region and her breathing would settle she would no longer be labored to fight physically within her body she would just settle go into a state of peace. In that, I am finding in my personal walk, I don't expect to thrust this upon other people. I am not here to change people. I am merely here to share the things that I have witnessed that I cannot explain that have nothing whatsoever to do with Larry. But they have everything to do with a perfect, loving omnipresent God that I can't even begin to think of using God's name in vain. Like in number three, you will know yourself in alignment to that which is my being as you will not be able to use my name in vain. 
I have instructed you to call upon my name any time you are in need of distress. You will know yourself in my truth, as you know that I have made you worthy to speak my name. Please hear that. God makes you worthy to speak his name. Call upon her wisdom. God is limitless. God is loving. God is pure. God is perfect. Yeshua evidenced this in every single breath he walked this earth because that was God's presence walking upon this earth in absolute purity, love, grace, divine blessing in aspects of healing, restoration, renewal, resurrection. There is no limit to his power because he is the physical manifestation of God's presence. You will see and know the words which will return all things of a cursed nature into blessing. In these things you will know that you have returned to the truth of my spirit and all that I have offered as I have breathed and all truth into you as I formed you before the beginnings of time. Number four, in your awareness of my presence, you will find that each day is a day to be holy, and you will honor the image I hold for creation in all your thoughts, words, and actions. In this, you will hold each day as a Sabbath day and a holy day. All days will be days measured in the fullness of my glory, and you will be a beacon of light to be offered to all people you encountered. In this, you will know that you have found yourself in the fullness of my presence. Do you hear this? This isn't about taking and limiting the presence of God to one day a week to support an institution. This is about choosing to recognize that every single day is the holy day of God's presence within you. You are the walking, living Sabbath day of God's presence. So again, when I hear people talking about, oh, well, I go to worship on Sunday, I have no problem with that. I have no question with that. But I'm like, okay, well, why can't we do that every day? <laughs> why can't we live and breathe the presence of God in every single thought, word, and moment? Number five. As you know my presence and the fullness of my presence within you, you will receive and recognize the path you have chosen. You will know my children, honored to evidence your life in the first heaven as mother and father. They're God's children, like my parents. In these, you will hold great honor and remember that these are the children used to reveal my spirit within you for the sake of all generations to be freed and returned into the image I hold to them without limitation. You will return into the knowing that I am the source for all life and that there is no limit to that which is my holiest of creation. My body fully formed and revealed by all that is blessed and most beautiful within creation. You will know that you have emerged from me directly and you will know your origins in me without limitation or influence of any kind to diminish that which I have formed. You will release all ties that you have known and return to the knowing that the one tie you hold is the perfect tie I offer with you in me. All of the ties will be viewed first through my eyes as you see all things restored and returned into the image of I, that I hold of perfection. This one is huge. And as you know, I just stated that we surrendered and released my mom into new life and did our goodbyes today and blessings upon the family. This was a beautiful experience where I actually sat with my dad down in Florida. And I was sitting with him, and I looked at him in love, and I said, Dad, can we pray? And he said, sure, Lou, because he calls me Lou. That's my nickname. I've given you one of the big secrets. <laughs> um, and I said, we, we engaged in prayer. I surrendered in, and God brought me into a deep, beautiful prayer. And at the end of the prayer, I just looked at him, and I said, Dad, I, just, I need you to understand this, and I, I know that God will precede my words. I release you as my father. 
I offer thanksgiving that God used you as the instrument to evidence me upon this earth, but I release you completely and offer thanksgiving that I have but one source, and it is God's presence. My dad stands up with tears in his eyes, walks over, pulls me up out of the chair, hugs the stuffing out of me and goes, you finally get it. And some people would be fearful to speak those words. But how could I not honor God first, then honor my dad by offering thanksgiving that God used him to evidence me upon this earth, but in that, God has blessed me to recognize God as my source, not my dad. My dad had, and I had a beautiful conversation after that. About four years later, I was blessed to give that same conversation to my mom, and she just wept in tears of thanksgiving that she was able to witness one of her sons recognize God first, even above her. And again, if a person does not embrace fear, if they do not embrace the idea of a God as a judging overlord, they might see and recognize a God as a loving, perfect offering of creation. God, the manifestation of all things blessed through all creation. Chapter 6. I mean... Uh, the, tenth, I mean, the sixth great word. As you find yourself in me, you will find that you can do nothing that will end life within this first heaven, and you will know that there is no end to life in me. You will know there is no death, only birth into new life, and that as you seek me, you will find the state of all things as they have been birthed into the next stage of their existence. In this, you will know that you have found me. Death will hold no power over you. And you will not be able to do anything to diminish life as I have formed it to be. You will find that you cannot alter or obstruct the natural flow of life. And you will find that you cannot resist the natural transition into new life for anything of that which I have formed in creation. So again, everything measured and weighed before the presence of God. And as you know, most people on this, um, whether it's through viewing the audio recordings or the phone calls, most of you know that I'm vegan. And it's not because I made a dietary choice. It's because I found I couldn't take life in any form. Now, when it came to vegetables and things like that, it's kind of like plucking an apple off a tree. I don't kill the tree. I take to me the life that is the fruit of that the fruit of the vegetables, the fruit of those things that I draw forth without killing. And I take it unto me because I know that God's presence comes from within all these things. That's just my choice. I don't expect everybody on the planet to choose that path. I just found that within me. And in that, we may find that we might rise up to a higher understanding of what is God's presence if we honestly align ourselves with life in every thought, word, and action, every breath. Number seven. Before I state this one, you have to remember that the word adulter in Greek means to bring something of a lesser form to something of a greater form. Imagine yourself. You have just spent eight hours preparing this amazing gourmet meal for your friends. You invite them all over for this remarkable meal that you have spent so much effort in. You've heightened the importance of which, which spice brings out the greater depth of flavor, which, which form of bubbly juice or whatever that you wanted to bring would actually enhance the, the flavor and subtleties of different flavors that you combine for the meal. All this beautiful work, and you have one friend that sits down and reaches down into a bag and takes McDonald's french fries and dumps them out onto your platter. That would be to adulter the meal. That would be to diminish the value of that meal by bringing it to it something of a lesser form. And number seven is, in me, you will not adulter or diminish any form of life. You will find that you cannot adulter any relationship or diminish anything I have formed by introducing anything of a lesser form to it. 
you will hold spiritual sight and the awareness of free, to free all things of a lesser form and offer them up as spiritual sacrifices in love and see all things refreed, freed from any lesser form to be realized as that which is intended to be blessing. Eight, in me you will know that I am all things a blessing and that in me you have all things. You will take nothing as you will know all things to be in you. You will lack nothing and will receive all. You will find that you cannot steal anything as things will be yours in me. Number nine, in me you will find that only words of blessing for those you have known and you will find that you can only speak words of blessing to your neighbor or to your brothers. You will find that you will speak life as you surrender your tongue to my use as I bless my children through the words of my spirit, through the words of your mouth. Be blessed in knowing me within the words of your mouth and the utterances coming forth to bless others. This is another one that is truly blessed and most powerful. To recognize God as the one that forms the words upon your lips, that you will find that you cannot even speak a word of curse or diminishing unto another. And to take this even further, we hear so much language about the earth, people talking about the holy land here or the holy land there or this being the holy land or that being this and this being where I was born. That's where I have to live for the rest of my life. In number 10, as you know yourself in me, you will, find, you will know yourself one in all things and that you will covet nothing. You will hold all thoughts in purity and desire the highest of blessing for all things you encounter you will covet nothing, as you will know your part in all things and that they will be honored in their form without adulteration. As your neighbor has possessions, you will know that you hold these blessings in the ability to pray for their increase upon your neighbor. As you are one in me, you will know the power you hold to increase the evidence of all things blessed in creation. In me you will covet nothing, as you will know all things accessible and blessed for the revelation of my glory and my being. As you know that you are connected in all things, you will know their, their place in creation and you will find that you can do nothing to remove them from their place in creation. The reality is, when you look upon another person with greater blessing, you will even be able to see them. And this is, this is me dialoguing right now, but you will be able to see them. Whether they have great personal wealth or they have great personal health, you will be able to pray increased blessing within that area. So that not only are they increased for personal gain, but they would be increased and freed from any physical limitation so that the purity and clarity within their body would touch and remember God's presence and glory within them. You see somebody with a great mansion, tremendous physical wealth. You pray increased wealth upon them so that from within that ground of wealth, they would touch the greater wisdom to know God's presence within them and then they would loose and free that wealth into God's use, not just possess it and hold it limited away from God's use. And if any of you have a chance to go back through and review the ten great words, I'll just give you a quick hint. One of the things that you will discover is every single one of the ten great words applies to every single relational encounter you might experience within life. Every one of them does. And this didn't come, to, when I was done reading the book, there was one time when I was blessed to do an event up in upstate New York, and I was blessed to teach on the Ten Great Words. And it came to me as this whole thing was unfolding, I'm like, oh my God. Every single one of these could be applied to every relational encounter. They're not limited to one expression or another. They all edify, magnify, and make known God's presence within 
every single relational encounter. And on that, I just want to offer thanksgiving for this time. And again, please thank you, each and every one of you that remain in prayer for myself, my family, during this time as we went through this day, blessing my mom as she returned into God's loving embrace. And I just trust that God's holy presence will greet you in your time of rest and renewal. And I trust that God's spirit will bring increased health, wellness, and abundance into your life in all attributes of his spirit so that you might be increased in wisdom to recognize anything that is not of God and relinquish your hold upon it immediately. And Yahweh, we surrender now for the words that your daughter Ina speaks. We open our hearts to you. Mm. You know, I just want to engage as well as the words that have been spoken that each of those that are listening and receiving these words of the ten great words are the ones that I always knew of the Ten Commandments, that even in growing in God, that they become into a greater awareness, first and foremost, of the deepened relationship that they each hold in you, Yahweh. And in that, it just so draws me to speak these words into them, not only that they be blessed in the words that they receive, but to come into a greater awareness of truth of word, not so much scripture, but word, then scripture, and understanding the true love of who you are within them. Even of these words that Larry is sharing, I thank you, God, that you just rest upon them in such a way and will move them to a greater place into you. And even this evening as they rest and go into their week and all the demands that they have, that you just continue to move in them and their families, their loved ones, their workplace, the gifts and talents, just rise up into a greater place and an understanding of your true love of these words being spoken, just as it has been for me, in growing in the true love of who you are and expanding that love out to others and all that you bring us into our lives and our past. And the same for all of your children, even those right now listening to this call and those that are going through things. I thank you even now the lifting off of any of those spiritual influences, any kind of demonic spirits that have been in the corporate setting of where you work, within your family, even like with sharing, Larry was sharing with his family of, of his mother now in, uh, in Yahweh's loving embrace. Even you on the call may be going through some things, and that was rising in me as well, is that you release those things and be able to move on into that which that God has for you. So that's just on my heart, and I wanted to share that with you. Be blessed and know how deeply loved you are and how blessed you all are. And with that, we thank you, God, for all that you have given us and all that will be in your precious name. Yahweh Elohim, Yeshua, Abun, Amen. Amen. I pray that each of you are blessed tonight and look forward to connecting with you next week. Have an amazing, blessed, and joy-filled week in knowing God's presence within every breath you receive. Yes, and we do love you. And thank you again for supporting and being on the call and seeking God in a greater way each and every day. Amen. Amen.